It is the ultimate war for eternity for the souls that God has put in your life to bring the gospel to as his body, being Jesus to them. Nothing is more important. It's more important than physical life and death. It's about eternity. And as you're in that battle, there cannot be a schism in the body. I don't really like that person. I don't get along with that person. You know, or I'm envious of that person. None of that can exist if you want to be an effective army any more than it could exist if the soldier next to you in battle was like that. But that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. So we are the body of Christ and we are members individually. So you've got your individual armor on and then you've got the army ready for battle. The church, the shield wall. Now, here's how the shield all worked in Roman times. I got a shield. I got a sword. You got a shield. You got a sword. He's got a shield. He's got a sword. And we're lined up like this. Okay? And then behind them is another line. And behind them is another line. And behind them is another line. It's kind of like this, this rectangle. Okay? And in the front, I'm protecting. And I've got, I've got my sword out so that each one of us is covering the other one. And each one of us has a sword out. And as the battle comes, we're all covering each other. Do you have to trust the person next to you? A hundred percent. Because they've got your back. Because I'm here and his shield is here. And my sword is here protecting this one. And we move forward and we stand firm and we go together as a shield wall. And you know what happens? Let's say something does get through and something gets me. And I go down. That's why we have these lines. Immediately, I can duck out. The next man comes up. I go to the back, get some rest when I, if I'm too tired or if I've been injured, deal with the injury. And then I, as we go up again, so we can just keep going and keep going. We got the front of the shield wall and then we got the people behind. The people behind it just keeps going. It just keeps moving forward, right? As one soldier gets tired, another one comes up. It's a body that works together protecting one another. That's how the shield wall works. That is, I believe, a very clear metaphor for the church. That's who we are. That's who we are. We act and move and live as an army. When one person's tired, another person steps up. We are to be training and preparing to fight the evil one and to protect one another. The idea that a Christian can survive as a Christ follower, outside of community, a community of committed Christ followers is laughable. It's just laughable. You cannot be rooted and be on your own. I'm not saying you couldn't grow at all, that there, there could be nothing good that happens, but I'm just telling you, there's nothing, you'll have nothing like the growth and the effectiveness on your own as you will in a body of Christ followers who trust one another and are committed to the battle. My son, Ethan, is in Virginia, living and working there in the city where I went to law school, actually, and where Tiffany went to graduate school. Um, and he has not been solidified in a community, Christian community there, and he feels it. He understands how important it is. We were talking this week on the phone, and he recognizes he's working on finding uh, that community to engage in because this fight is not meant to be done alone. And when I see a Christ follower who's dealing with that, I mean, the amount that they struggle with, just basic things because they don't have that community, is significant. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much more, so much the more as you see the day approaching. People will separate themselves from the community of church for a number of reasons. They've been hurt. There aren't any good churches around them. <laughs> I've seen that before. Like, I don't even know where to go in this town. You know, not this town necessarily, but other towns to church because no one's actually preaching the word of God. There are different reasons why people find themselves outside of this. But the, what the scripture says is, no, you got to be in the body. Walking around with your armor on and no army is a really good way to get taken out. Who's got your back? To be rooted is to be in community with God's army. So ask yourself, am I in community? Do I have soldiers standing next to me, in front of me, and behind me? Are they rejoicing with me when I rejoice? Are they mourning with me when I mourn? Or am I, am I doing this on my own, kind of? If you're doing it on your own, you're not rooted. You're just not. 
If your life is about you first, and second, you, and then the third thing, you, and, and the body of Christ is somewhere down the list, you're not rooted. If, you're feel like, if you feel like you're kind of being beat up by the world, it's probably because you're not standing with the army of God and therefore cannot stand at all. People are looking all over the world in every place for love and acceptance and community. In this world, so many people want that. Why do you think that the uh, transgender phenomenon has exploded? One of the reasons, there's a book by a woman named Abigail Schreier uh, that you can read about this. One of the reasons that they're proposing is that because it particularly happens with young women, like in high schools and junior highs, where large groups of them will all of a sudden all become transgender. They all want to be men. What, what happens is, is that there's this pull where there's a community that says, hey, if, if, this is, if you choose to be this, then you instantly have this community that says, we, we love you, we've got you, we're, we're a group. And all you need to do to have status is just say, I'm a female that wants to be a male. And all of a sudden, instantly you have status. And of course, if you're in junior high and high school, instantly having status in a group is something that people would pay almost their lives for. And in some cases, that is what they're paying. They don't understand that now. But many of them are destroying their lives because of it. People want it. And when they see us, they see Christ followers, they should see an army strong in the power of the Lord, terrible with banners. That's what they should see. The unbeliever should be drawn into our ranks because they see us following Jesus and growing and serving and loving each other. It should be a draw to them. They should look at us and be like, look at how unified they are. Look at how much they trust each other. Look how much they love each other. Look at each one with a sword of faith. I'm sorry, a shield of faith and the sword of the spirit. Look at each one of them growing in this close-knit community and they should be drawn to it. But when we all have our own thing and we don't have time for it. Well, we don't look like a strong community. This is part of your foundation in Jesus Christ that cannot be overlooked. This idea of the whole armor of God and the shield ball cannot be overlooked. If you have not made a commitment in your life to be part of a local expression of the body of Christ, which of course we hope you're called to this one, but wherever you're called, you're called to be in a local expression of the body of Christ and to stand with your brothers and sisters in Christ for battle. If you're not in that situation, you're not rooted right now. If you're called to Acts Church and you're not attending worship services as a practice and lifestyle as opposed to as a one-off. If you're not in a life group, if you're not serving, if you're not tithing, if you're not praying for your brothers and sisters, then you're not a good soldier to stand next to in the fight, frankly. Who am I going to trust the most? Those who I know are pouring themselves out for the gospel. The thing that I care, if I care about Jesus and I care about people knowing Jesus, then I'm going to want to be next to people who I know care the same way. How do I know they care the same way? You show me your faith without works. I'll show you my faith by my works. There's a way to be known. Show it with your fruitfulness. I'm not talking about salvation. Works don't get you salvation. Salvation is by faith through grace. It's the grace of God, 100% God. But once you are saved, you should desire to do the works that make you fruitful that make you a good soldier to have next to me in the battle. Because I want to be a good soldier to be next to you. Some of you might be thinking right now, who are you to tell me how to live and how to be a Christ follower? I'm nobody. I'm nobody. I'm a sinner in desperate need of the glorious salvation I have found in Jesus Christ. That's who, that's who I am. But I'm called to be a pastor and to teach you the Bible. And... The one calling you to these things is God. So if you have an issue, take it up with him because this is what he's calling you to. These are the things that a reliable brother or sister in arms does. It's what builds trust in one another and strength in Christ's body, the church. We are literally Jesus to the world, literally, not figuratively. Literally, he is using us as his body in the world. He is working, acting through us. In the spiritual world, Jesus is using us as his body. We got to be strong. We got to be united. We got to be a soldier. We got to be a shield wall, all that stuff. We need the shield wall. We can't have Christianity be about us, having a better life, going to church to feel better. Those things may happen. You may feel better when you go to church. I hope so. 
But we're here to bear witness to the truth of the gospel as Jesus was here to bear witness to the truth. And we need each other for that. We need, need to be willing to lay down our lives for each other and for the lost. It's not nothing. This isn't just a place to come get a pep talk. This is real. We need the shield wall. Now, if you don't know Jesus Christ, if you hear this message and your spirit is testifying in you that you, you want this life, this is a life that you'd like to have, the life of following a risen Savior who has overcome the world and is for you and has forgiven your sins and will make you right with him. Well, I've got good news for you, the good news. If you want to follow the King of glory who made the world and has thought about you, since before he laid the foundations of the earth, has more thoughts about you than the hairs on your head. This is your day. Romans 10, 9 through 10, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. There's not more, there's not less. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You confess that Jesus is Lord. You know he's in charge. You believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You're saved. That's it. It's not anything you do. He's doing it in you. You can be saved and made clean from all your sin and rebellion and rejection of God, and he will heal you because he loves you and he died for you while you were yet a sinner. That's how he's proved it. He didn't die for everybody when they were good. He died for the world when we were rejecting him and we were sinning. This is the day the Lord has made. He has made us for such a time as this. If I can get something across to you, I want you to understand, this is not an accident that you are here at this time, in this present darkness. That did not happen by accident. God made you for such a time as this. Meaning if he wants you to stand in the shield wall, he will give you all the strength and power to do it. It might be difficult, you have to change some of the ways that you think, some of your traditions, some of the ways you even think about what church is in order to know what it means to truly follow Christ. But you've been called to it. You were made for this. You know, Paul, Peter, they weren't made for this. They were made for a different time. St. Patrick, I was just talking about that with Kaylee. She doesn't want to name her kid Patrick because her husband's saying, I don't know what her problem is. Patrick's a good name. But St. Patrick... He wasn't made for this time. He was made for a different time. You were made for this time. The angels are watching. They have a few questions they'd like to see. What has God done with this generation? This group that he from before the world began knew exactly what they'd be facing and made them for it. You need to understand that. You are living in the destiny that God has made for you. And evil cannot stand against God or against Christ's church and prevail because we have already won. We've already won. So put on the belt of truth. Gird your waist with it. Get tough. Put on the breastplate of righteousness and kill any sin in your life. Don't let it have a place. Put on your cleats, the hobnailed heavy sandals of the preparation of the gospel of peace that you might stand and that no one's going to move you. Hold up the shield of faith. Cover your head with the helmet of salvation. And know, read, and study, and be ready with the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Stand with me, and I'll stand with you. Let's be faithful to God. You can't stand alone. I can't stand alone. Be a soldier that I can trust. I want to be a soldier. I strive in the power of Christ to be a soldier you can trust. Let's do this thing. Let's do it. God has called us to do it in his power and strength for the victory that God has already won. I love each of you. Glory to God in the highest that we might go forward as his army and his shield. Well, let's pray.